Imagine the ultimate singularity, the divine spark of creation. It duplicates itself infinitely according to the immutable laws of mathematics, electromagnetism, gravity, musical harmony, sound, light, and geometry. It ever whispers to us through symbols and the eternal building blocks of perfect measure prime numbers. It hides its timeless mystery within every flower of every life that blossoms from the blueprint known as Archangel Metatron's Cube. The sacred altar contains the seed of all possible three-dimensional patterns in creation. It must, therefore, hold the key to the greatest architectural accomplishment known to man, the Pyramids of Giza. Polymath and artist Robert Grant has discovered that key using only non-dimensional compass and straight edge methods. The measurements you'll see in this series have resulted as a consequence of pure geometric constructions that were then corroborated with exacting accuracy in GeoGebra software. Musician and cryptographic analyst Alan Green has solved Renaissance codes that confirm that these hermetic secrets were deliberately hidden within the works of Shakespeare to preserve their purity through the Dark Age for future discovery when the world would be ready to fully comprehend. That time is now. Let's examine the basic grid connecting these circles or spheres with the unit diameter 1. Since this angle is 30 degrees, the length is always a ratio of root 3, no matter what fractal of the grid we're observing. We find the exact same proportion in the very first construction of Euclid's elements, the Vesica Piscis a sacred symbol used in medieval art to depict a halo of divinity around saints. This strongly suggests that the grid underpinning Metatron's cube, the very seed of the all-pervasive fabric of creation, is actually a mathematical echo of the Trinity, the root of three in one. Grant intuited that if there was a simple key to the seeming complexity of the Giza pyramids, it must be found somewhere within the inherent geometry created by connecting every center of the 13 equal circles to every other center, which when accomplished, looks like this. It's been known since Plato's time that by selectively connecting certain combinations of these lines, the five platonic solids, the basic building blocks of creation, can all be perfectly formed within Metatron's cube. It's also clear to see that every Metatron's cube connects to every other Metatron's cube, directly through its three central axes in an infinitely repeating grid pattern. So. Can this interconnectivity be used to decipher a previously unforeseen grid connecting the three pyramids? Green's discoveries of hidden geometries on the cover of Shakespeare's sonnets revealed not only the geographic coordinates of the Great Pyramid, but the math constant that predicts its corner slope angle. It's positioned in such a way as to align with the sonnet circle center and solves the conundrum that Johannes Kepler had wrestled with unsuccessfully his whole life. He had famously stated, geometry has two great treasures. One is the theorem of Pythagoras. The other, the division of a line into extreme 
and mean ratio. In other words, the golden ratio. But he couldn't figure out how they were connected. We all know, of course, that the diagonals of a square reveal its center. It's also well known that the half diagonal of the square gives us a triangle with the side ratios 1, 2, root 5, which produces the golden rectangle, and thereby the very definition of phi, the golden ratio. It's simply the length divided by the height of the rectangle. What was not known during Shakespeare's time is that simply drawing three half diagonals within a square produces a perfect 3-4-5 triangle. Yet the sonnets cover accurately predicted it and connected it to a math constant at Giza. The great Kepler never knew that geometry's two great treasures are indeed intimately linked and hidden in the perfect structure of the Great Pyramid. So let's now use the same method linking the diagonal and the half diagonal of Metatron's rectangle. We immediately see they cross at a point that not only connects seven circle centers, but also links with a third line, making another three-in-one trinity point, altogether connecting nine of Metatron's 13 centers. Plus, it has its own mirror reflection here. Three-in-one connections are not uncommon in Metatron's cube, but by connecting with this particular mirrored grouping down here, these small green points have now linked to every circle center in the entire construction. The fact that they also coincide with three circles tangent to each other is a clue that led Grant to connect them and investigate these two cross points they make along the basic grid rectangle. And now, the magic. At the baseline of Metatron's cube, we draw a circle whose radius is the distance from the base center to the two X points. We simply join the diameter baseline points to the very center of the construction and discover a perfect cross section of the Great Pyramid, or G1 popularly named after Pharaoh Khufu. Let's look at those three-in-one cross points again. If we rotate Metatron's cube 60 degrees and highlight those same points, now in new positions, we see that one of them is a duplicate of one of the former, producing the same cross points in a different view of the grid. And if we do this six times, every possible rotation, we find they all are duplicates of each other, resulting in six interlocked Great Pyramids. You may remember in a previous presentation by Grant and Green on Da Vinci's Vitruvian Man, there were six Great Pyramid cross sections hidden there also. We now duplicate this large blue circle twice mark their vesica piscus points, and draw a horizontal line tangent to all three circles. The vesica piscus, you'll recall, has the same root 3 to 1 structure as Metatron's grid. And as we can see, there is a square already created that has the same width as the vesica. So let's draw two diagonals to find the center of that square. Remember the significance of the half diagonals? We draw two of those to find the center of the half square and inscribe a circle whose diameter is half of the square's side length. Repeat that circle at the top of the square and mark where it crosses the center vertical with a small red dot. And now, more magic. Draw a horizontal line here and duplicate the method Green discovered on the sonnet's cover to reveal the hidden 3-4-5 triangle. Draw another half diagonal here and mark where they cross the horizontal. Finally, connect from the small red dot through those cross points 
down to the baseline. As we can see from the angle, this creates a perfect 3-4-5 triangle. Since the cross section of the Khafre pyramid is two 3-4-5 triangles back to back, we now have a perfect representation of the central pyramid at Giza, G2, popularly named after the pharaoh Khafre and it's in precise size relationship to the Great Pyramid, G1. All that remains is to draw a circle whose diameter is the height of the triangle we just discovered. Note how the Khafre circle intersects precisely the corners of the Khufu half base square. Such accuracy clearly confirms that the original Giza designers intended to connect these two giant monuments through pure geometric perfection. But one critical question remains. Was the third pyramid, Menkore, also part of some grand design? To find out, let's draw two more circles with diameter equal to Khufu's half base. The half diagonals of the Khufu square produce two points where they intersect those circles. Connecting those points to the two upper corners gives us a new center point. Now, draw a circle whose diameter is the distance from that point to the center of the base and mark where that circle intersects the half diagonals. Yet again, it's the half diagonals that reveal the mystery. Note how three significant points have intersected them, mirror imaged on each side. Abracadabra. It turns out there are actually four significant intersections. A perfect square reveals itself here, whose corners precisely intersect the circle at those half diagonals, just as we saw in the construction of Khafre based on the Khufu square. All we have to do now is draw two circles whose diameters equal the base of the new green square and where they intersect the baseline. Connect to the upper point of the circle. Here she is. The perfect side slope angles reveal G3, popularly named after Pharaoh Menkore. And again, in precise size relationship to the other two pyramids. So here they all are, G1, G2, and G3. Undeniably designed not as three separate building projects by a continuing line of dynastic pharaohs, but one interconnected architectural masterpiece. Three in one, elegantly conceived from the geometric flower of life itself, Metatron's cube and all derived through the simplest, non-dimensional means possible, the tools of the ancients, compass and straight edge, the holy grail of geometry.